Hello everyone and welcome to another video where I recreate famous logos from scratch in Figma. In today's video we're going to take a look at the McDonald's logo, the famous golden arches that probably everyone in the world is familiar with. Here we have two images that will serve us as a guide, kind of a blueprint of the McDonald's logo with its geometry that I found online. Um, in terms of this image, I downloaded that from this website, I'm just creative.com. With this image, however, I wasn't able to locate the original source. So if anyone actually knows where is this coming from, I would be quite interested to find out. This probably looks as if it's from some kind of book, so I'd be very interested in knowing what book this is. Anyway, as you can see, we have some kind of geometry taking place within the McDonald's logo. Um, you can see that the logo is working with a golden ratio, which is a special kind of ratio between two numbers that comes up to 1.618, I think, but this is, you know, close enough, which is perceived to be uh, the ideal amount, the ideal proportions throughout nature and throughout art. And for some reason, people tend to perceive this, these proportions as aesthetically pleasing. So the McDonald's logo is working with this kind of ratio. And we also have some kind of ellipses and various units of sizes X, Y, and Z. And we're, we're gonna try and combine these, these guides to recreate the McDonald's logo from scratch. First of all, why don't we determine these values that are represented by x, y, and z variables. And we're gonna use this image for that. So let me actually lock this frame, uh, which is the frame that contains this picture. And let's try and use our rectangle tool to create a rectangle that corresponds to these dimensions. So this rectangle seems to be 200 pixels tall and around 228 pixels wide. Right? That seems to be the case with this basic bounding box of the logo, right? So there's that. Then when it comes to the Y value, let me use the rectangle tool again. So using my rectangle tool right here to match this somehow with our image, right? So I think looking at this now, I think we are looking at 15 or 14.5, probably closer to 14.5 in terms of height. Um, so let me just use the text tool and type in 14.5. We will use some nice contrasting color to make sure that this is perceived as some kind of guides or informational values. Let's go for magenta. We have therefore determined the Y value to be equal to 14.5, right? And let's uh, deduce the rest from this value. The X value, which to me seems like this kind of width, right? The individual arches at their widest point, they seem to be consisting of two Y values, right? So the Y times two, which would mean 29, right? So let me just rotate this original Y rectangle, duplicate that one, and let me also adjust the position to 0.5 so that they align perfectly. So let me write this down. X equals 29, right? Which is 14.5 times two. Let me also group these together and move them by half a pixel to the left. So that would be minus 0.5. And as you can see, it matches, I think almost perfectly in the middle, right? So we just had to adjust the position of this, of this group of two Y rectangles. I'm gonna make this one slightly more transparent than the other one to be able to easily differentiate between these two. Now all that remains is to calculate the Z value. Uh, I think I'm gonna also use the rectangle for that. So let me just do this. The Z value seems to be sitting at 71 pixels, 71 points or just 71 units. Uh, as you can see, if I add 72, I think that's a bit too much. I think 71, maybe 71.5 is the value we are looking for. That way we'd have to, again, move this rectangle to the left slightly to get a precise position. Um, yeah, I think this is closer. So the Z value seems to be 71.5. We also will note this down. So let me do that. 
z equals 71.5. And now we can figure out all the remaining dimensions. Uh, of course, since we are measuring all these values from an image, uh, it's possible that there are some um, irregularities. So it's possible that if we add it together, the z value twice and then x value three times, which should be the total width of the, of the logo, it's possible that it won't add up to 228. But anyway, let's try. Let's do a rectangle right here and let's type in, let's type in 70, 1.5 times 2, right? So that's 2z. And now we're gonna add plus 29 times 3. And we got 230. Yes, so that's what I was talking about, that it's possible we get some irregularities, uh, which in this case seems to be two more pixels, because this is 228 and this is 230. Which means there are some irregularities, but I believe that it is close enough, right? The difference is less than 1%, which is visually almost identical, as you can see. Let's continue. We know that the Z value is 71.5, the X value is 29, the Y value is 14.5. And now we are actually ready to start uh, carving out these shapes. And for that, we will use this as a guide. As you can see, what's happening right here is that we get four ellipses, right? We get an ellipse that is, that out, is being outlined like this. Let me actually use an ellipse tool to create an ellipse. So the first ellipse is this, right? That's the first ellipse. It covers basically the entire height of the full, full arc of the full ring where the half of the ring is basically invisible. And if we duplicate this, then we have this kind of ellipse. So we have two ellipses like this that are then duplicated and they are making up the second right part, right? Makes sense. So how big should these ellipses actually be? Let's figure that out. Regarding the outer ellipse, we know that the total height of this ellipse, right? total height of this ellipse should be twice as much as the height of the logo. Why? Because if you, we use a guide, let me use a guide like this, you can see that the bottom edge of the logo is going what appears to be precisely the middle of these ellipses, right? It makes sense. It looks, it looks good. It looks balanced. So I'm going to assume that this ellipse is twice the height of the logo in total. So let me actually continue with this assumption and let me create an ellipse that is 400 pixels tall, right? Because the overall height of the logo is 200. So let me create an ellipse that is 400 pixels tall. Uh, good. And now what we also know is that the width of the ellipse is going to be the Z value plus X plus X, right? So it's going to be basically, let me type this so width of outer ellipse will be equal to z plus 2 times x, right? z plus 2 times x. So for those of you that wanted to see a design tutorial, a logo design tutorial and ended up on a math class video, I apologize. But uh, in this specific case where the geometry is so precise, it's important to use a bit of, um, a bit of math. So we know that the Z is 71.5. So let me type in for this ellipse 71.5. And then let me also type in just to mimic this equation plus two times 29. Right? Why? Because the width of the outer ellipse, we have determined that to be the Z value plus X plus X. So Z plus X plus X, that's the total width. So let me actually press enter. And this turns out to be 129.5, 129.5. And that would be the outer ellipse. And if we position that ellipse like this, we actually overlay it on top of the original uh, bounding box of the logo. You can kind of see, you can kind of see how how it creates the first arc, right? And what we also know is that the second one, since the logo is symmetrical, second outer ellipse, which is this one, right? Let me outline it. This ellipse that's going to be completely the same, just moved to the right 
and aligned with the right side of the bounding box. So let me duplicate this by Alt and dragging and position it right here, right? So that's how we get the second outer ellipse. Then let's take a look at these inner ellipses. How big are they? We know for sure that the width of the inner ellipse is gonna be the width of the outer ellipse minus 2x or also simply z right that's gonna be the width of the inner ellipse so let me duplicate this ellipse press command d and then type in the width area let me type in 71.5 we know that for sure right and then also let me move this so that it's centered aligned to the center with the outer ellipse and in terms of the height we know that the height of this inner ellipse is gonna be the same as the outer ellipse but minus 2 times y and why is that well that's because you can see that the difference between the height on the top edge is 14.5 the y value right so this is the inner ellipse this is the outer ellipse and this is the difference the difference is y and it's 14.5 however the difference is on both sides right here and here so for that reason we're gonna have to subtract the y value twice which means i'm gonna again type into the height area i'm gonna type in minus 2 times 14.5 enter and then we also take these two and center them vertically right and you can kind of see the arc being you know taking shape next thing we're going to do is duplicate this ellipse and center that against the second outer ellipse right additionally you can see that there is some kind of cutout right here the logo in the middle ends slightly you know towards the top in the middle it's it's not all aligned to this bottom edge and the difference between this line and this line that's of course the y value which means i'm just going to duplicate this rectangle and position that first of all centered against the bounding box and second of all aligned to the bottom right so we have prepared a rectangle that will help us to cut out from the remaining shape right let me actually move this move this upwards so what needs to happen now now we have prepared all the shapes we got all the proportions right we know you can kind of see the golden arcs the mcdonald's logo uh, taking shape uh, amongst all these shapes now we just need to somehow take these and cut the logo out from from all these shapes so what i'm going to do now is select this ellipse make sure it's positioned above this ellipse right so ellipse 7 and ellipse 5 and then i'm going to select both of these and go over here to do subtract selection right both of these selected subtract selection nice we got this ring same thing here ellipse 6 on top of ellipse 3 select both of these and subtract selection awesome you can see we are almost there this is now very quick since we've established all these values let me duplicate this rectangle let me move it to the top by pressing command option right bracket right you can see it's now at the top and let me position it so that it snaps with this edge right here so let's do this awesome and let me make this wider and then what I'm gonna do is select this new rectangle 14 duplicate it or just let's just duplicate it right here so that it doesn't move so select that rectangle in the first ring and again go to first of all make sure the rectangle is on top then go to this menu and say subtract selection right we got the first arc and then take this rectangle and the second ring make sure the rectangle is on top of the ring and again go here subtract selection boom and now you can really see that we are almost there right now what is happening right here in the middle there is some kind of situation that we need to take a look at because we don't want this curve to go all the way here right as you can see it's all nice and symmetrical you cannot see any curve going leftwards right it's only an inner ellipse going rightwards whereas here it's going leftwards so how do we fix that we make sure that only this shape is the leftmost shape that is shown here so we need to cut out this area from the right shape how do we do that well i'm going to use the pen tool by pressing p or the rectangle tool so that this is simpler 
and just create a rectangle that will cover this area, right? So rectangle like this. Let me set the color to black and transparent. And then let's duplicate this over here, right? What we need to do next is select this rectangle and this arc, go to this menu and again, subtract selection, right? And do the same with these two. Select this rectangle and this arc and again, subtract selection. Don't worry about this not being symmetrical. We're gonna merge these two shapes and all that remains is this curve and this curve. This won't be visible. Let's continue. We are almost there. Let's take these two curves and go to this menu again and simply click union selection. You can see that all these shapes over here have disappeared and finally, we need to do one final cutout. We need to make sure that this space is empty, which it currently isn't, right? As you can see, all these logo ends on the bottom edge on all three kind of legs. And so I'm gonna take this rectangle 13 that we have prepared, move it on top of the our newly created shape, select both of these, and finally go to this menu and do subtract selection. And here we go. Here is the McDonald's logo shape created in Figma. Let me sample the yellow color from here and set the opacity to 100%. And there we go. That's our McDonald's logo that we have created in Figma. So using the McDonald's logo blueprints, using some geometry and a bit of math, we have achieved at this final result, which is well, the McDonald's logo. If you have enjoyed this video or if this video helped you, let me know by leaving a like. And also if there is a famous logo that you'd like me to recreate in Figma, let me know by leaving a comment below. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one.